Okay, today I'm in the Fitstairs Club in Mayfair. Correct. William Woodhams, <laughs> uh, Chief Executive Officer of Fitstairs. Uh, you are that now, but you've had a distinguished uh, career outside of racing and you specialised in marketing. Can you tell us a bit about your previous? Well, firstly, the most important thing, Simon, is we've been playing a fan dance for two years. <laughs> and I'm so happy that you're here. So yeah. thank you very much. And obviously, I'm a big fan. Uh, yeah, I come from a marketing and strategic background, so advising businesses um, for over 20 years. And my first, actually, my first job was in a nightclub. Uh, so I know the ent I know the entertainment sector, and then that and that so I've done every job that a teenage boy would like to do, other than the obvious ones. But I've sold sold booze, I've sold watches, Formula One cars, uh, fashion brands, worked for the Victoria on the Victoria's Secret show, only straight man in, <laughs> in the backstage, and all those silly things. But um, it was only natural that I'd end up being a bookie. You mentioned the entertainment business. A lot of people sort of forget that. that's what bookmaking is. Uh, so you it's the greatest. It is the greatest entertainment in the world. You get to watch what you love, and sometimes you make a bit of money. I can't believe anyone would think anything other than that. It's the most fantastic business, and I love it. <laughs> so you've gravitated to bookmaking. You've been in the firm what for two years now? I've been two two years. Uh, I start I, our financial year is first of July, so two years, three months. Okay, and you mentioned some of the firms that you work for there. That includes Amazon as well, Tiffany's, uh, Victoria's Secret, um, Pirelli. That's another one. Oh, Pirelli Calendar, one of the highlights. Are they still allowed? <laughs> uh, no, we. I stopped. Well, I didn't. We stopped it being what it was and turned it into what it is. So we did the first all-black Pirelli Calendar, which was a big stepping stone for the business, and we just used. We, we took it away from soft porn and turned it into something a bit more interesting. Okay, now interested now for you is uh, bookmaking. Now some people here on that CV might think there's a bit of a strange jump, but you've got it in your blood, haven't you? A Great bit. Thing. First of all, it's not a strange jump at all. I think the bookmaking industry, just to be not controversial straight up, needs a bit of a broom at the moment. I'm not saying I'm the broom. Um, and there's a lot of old timers who are sort of leaving the biz. Now, don't get me wrong, I have full respect for the the industry leaders, but the 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 the, the tailwinds of compliance and governance and government are changing so this uh, they've been doing the same thing for a long time the big boys and it's about time uh, we're not a big boy but it's about time there's some changes in the industry um, but yes my my family I've uh, in uh, have been in racing and punting and broadcasting and writing about racing and tipping and training for quite some time right you were kind enough to mark my card so I'm going to tease it out of you form right. line by form line so first right. of all your mum worked for Turf Newspaper. Yes, so she. I think that was doing almanacs, racing almanacs, a bit like um, Time Form. Her brother. Do you want me to do? It? Shall I go the family tree? Yes, go for it. Her brother um, was head handicap, capper and guitar. Ran the jockey club in Macau before that, and trained for John Fitzgerald. His uncle was John Rickman, who was the ITV before Ed Chamberlain, the ITV presenter, famously in Newcastle once. There was a uh, the planes couldn't get up, so John Rickman called the race, uh, went down to the betting ring, did the pre presenting, and gave the trophy away. It did all five jobs, or uh, you wouldn't get that on um, uh, the morning line, or whatever it is called nowadays. His he was Jim Crack. His father was Jim Crack, or Jim Crack, whichever you call it, in the Mail or the Express, whatever it was. And their grandfather was Tom Jennings, who trained Gladiator. Uh, so he was based in Chantilly, then moved back to Newmarket, and Gladiator obviously, oh, 1863, I can't remember, but a triple crown winning French horse. Um, they called it the Avenger of Waterloo, so uh, sadly my family trained for the French. And uh, uh, But if you, go to Long, if you go to Longchamp for the Arc, which no one will <laughs> this weekend, um, uh, the statue's there, and, uh, and he, moved back to, he moved back to Newmarket and actually I know that he did the drains in Newmarket, so if it smells uh, on the heath, it's his fault. But you tell me that he, did, he built some hospitals. He was a well. philanthropist and he built some hospitals. Yeah, so, so yeah, he was a farmer trainer, so he wasn't posh, broadcasters. And actually, I forgot to say, my mother's father was a pro punter. Um, and uh, like all pro punters, successful and unsuccessful. But his, one of his highlights was he had a Bentley at one point and he swapped it for one of those water cars in the 60s, you know, the ones that you could drive into the river that sunk. So that, that pretty much summarised his betting career, I think. <laughs> you need to tell us a bit more about him. 
Well, yeah. my grandfather. The, the pro, uh, the pro punting. I mean, uh, I, I, I mean, yeah. I just think he was. He, 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 you know, he was his wife. My grandmother's brother was John Rickman, and and there was a long lineage in that family of racing. I think he was more of a, he was just more of a man about a town punter, a bit of a rogue, I think, and uh, and loved it. I can't remember who his bookie was, um, but um, he probably had a few. But yeah, he uh, highs and lows. But I think probably. He called it quits in his 50s and 60s and, and tried something else. Is he somebody you remember or is it just... No, not at all. Uh, he was slightly estranged from him. Um, but he left an indelible mark on the family, definitely. And <laughs> as a boy, were you watching John Rickman? No, I'm, t I'm too young. I'm, I'm very happy, I'm very happy to and say. I grew, up on, I grew up on Morning Line. And actually, uh, I knew uh, in my 20s, I knew Nick Luck, just socially. And so to watch, to, in my 20s, to watch your mate, you know, anchor a TV show it was amazing in those days. But I think I mentioned to you earlier, I, my, I caught them, a friend of mine at school, I was at a sort of naval academy, <laughs> which is a bit of, my father died, so I got sent to a sort of military school. Nothing wrong with that. And, um, and I used to be uh, on the blower to uh, B B William Hills. I had a William Hills account because one of the other students' father was a submariner. And he was a captain of a, a, a submarine and he gave me his William Hill card. He said, if I'm underwater, it's your account and I'll give you 10%. So don't tell anyone. Oh, you told me not to mention the bookies, but you've got to give them a plug. They're about to be sold. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so you had an account with a major firm, Act 14, who we, who we won't mention. Um, so d and it, wasn't, mention it, away, it, it wasn't your account. So no, you, it wasn't my account. So, you, so I was, still have Well, it. you shouldn't place a bet on behalf of someone else. <laughs> so, so are you going to go back through the accounts and uh, say, um, actually, I shouldn't have placed those he, bets? He was, no, it was terrible behaviour. And, and you, get, you know, you get, everyone gets the bug a different way. It's the first day racing or... Uh, but for me, it was four. I mean, it used to get the form in every newspaper. So in school, we'd have a copy of the Times and the Sun sitting around. And, and the, just the colour of the silks would get you interested. And as soon as you understand four to one means it's got a, very, it's got a reasonably good chance of winning, you start, start seeing it in a different way. And he was, and I said to him, I, want to, I, I love betting. And, uh, and he gave me his card. And he just said, crack on and I'll check when, I, when my periscope goes up, I'll check you're not losing me a fortune. So you weren't the school bookmaker. And a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, the lads who went to quite nice schools yeah. they like to be the school bookmaker. They, I think most of our brokers probably did. Um, but that's a bit St Trinian's, isn't it? <laughs> There's a, a bookie in a covert coat at the school. Uh, but yeah, no, and that's good. And then, I, and then my mum took me racing and I got the bug, obviously. So I was always, even though I did a different career path, um, I was a member of Fitstairs from its inception. Uh, loved it, loved the, the idea of less a gentleman's bookmaking, more just really wonderful customer service and events and experiences. So I was a, I was a, I was a good enough punter to go to all the Fitstairs events, but not a very good punter as a whole. Right, so you, you actually had your eye on the firm before you joined the firm then? Oh yeah, totally, and I've become friends with Balthazar um, through Fitstairs, and yeah, no, it's a, it, it really, you know, when it launched, Fitstairs was, I mean, head and shoulders, you know, it's the same, head and shoulders above the competition, particularly as when it launched, they launched text betting. And at this point, you, it, was, it was physically, you walked into a bookies or you maybe rang the office, uh, a call centre. But um, when Fit says launched text betting, it was pretty revolutionary. Unfortunately, they're a little bit slow on the other technology. And we've caught up now. Right, so um, are you still a punter? Not with fit stairs, obviously. Not with fit stairs. I have, um, uh, I have <laughs> three, three accounts, <laughs> and uh, but I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not out to win. I'm a. I'm a bookmaker, not a punter. Know your place, I say, and I think that's an, that's, that's very important business for fit stairs. And sure, our brokers have a punts here and there, you know, um, but we use our information to as a bookmaker, not to place bets. So I have a, a dabble up in there. I think I am. I think I'm a 3% winning client with Sky, <laughs> and, but they've limited me down quite annoyingly, and, uh, and I'm definitely losing with Star. You know, you can confirm Oh, that. You've, got, you've got an account with Star? Of course I have, for, you know, for all my political bets. So, um, <laughs> you talked about some of your, your brokers that have bets. Would they... Would they don't really. I mean, they're definitely not. We're very strict. We're, we're very strict. We wanna, we, when I arrived, you know, there was lots of, you know, uh, trade clients hedging, this and that, and I was like, let's just focus on bookmaking. Offer a good price, good service. Relook after clients. You know, let them pick. You know, have a, let them pick up the phone and have a, you know, have a tickle on the. You know, move the tick occasionally. Keep them sweet. That's what we do. That's our job. We take you, people on. Would you keep live wires on for a mark? Uh, I don't know. I, um, yeah, I mean, 
I, cu I couldn't say. I mean, we, you know, we're, we're very lucky that we have a lot of industry people bet with us. So we're, we're aware of that information and you use that information as and when it comes about. But really, it's more to protect ourselves rather than to, to hedge or place bets elsewhere. OK, now you come from uh, what sounds like quite a genteel set of industries, though I suppose that can be a bit cutthroat. But you, with this, you haven't got a clue. I what, haven't. That's what the I'm fashion, asking. fashion business is... I, I, honestly, the echo chamber of the, the bookmaking world, because people, there's disgruntled, there's disgruntled punters. This, this is, that's what happens, but, you know, particularly Nobody if you lose or, or if, if we're using the T's and C's that they haven't read and, you know, and, and there's, a, there's a certain honour in it and all of that. And, and no, we're very, you know, we, we will go the, uh, over and above to keep punters happy, which we should, because that's, you know, even winning punters, you know, we've got to look after them. Maybe one day they'll lose or but there's, there's bad vibes and all of that. But uh, what was the question? <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it I, I assume rightly or wrongly, by the sound of it, wrongly that you come from industries that no, are more genteel. No, sorry. So I was to answer your question is sometimes the echo chamber of Twitter and all this can make it sound very negative. People in race, we're focusing on because we're looking at lots of pictures of horses and, and what we've got on the 4:45 at Sedgefield on the screen. Um, people in racing are lovely. And some mornings, in general, are lovely. When was the last time you got into a fight on course? Don't answer that. But I mean, apart from kids at Ascot getting drunk, th there's a very good vibe in the racing world. It, one of the warmest, most genuine, you know, people are very forgiving and lovely. However, they talk too much to themselves and they get angry about stuff and people get vitriolic. And sometimes Twitter in the morning in the racing world could be quite an unpleasant place. And then by, by the time the race is off, it, it, every, everything is settled. And I always, I always say the best thing about racing is racing. From that, that four, you know, in this, there's a two mile race. The, you know, that four minutes, whatever, that is heaven. No bullshit. No arguing. No moaning about price. No pushing. No shoving. No arguing. No slagging you off. No atting you. No moaning. The race is off. It's down to the jockeys and the horses and the trainer and the course and that's the magic moment of racing that is the elixir that we all strive to have and if the horse you bet on finishes or each ways it's way over the line that's heaven and i so i'd argue other industries have just as much bitching and arguing and stress it's just they hide it a bit more <laughs> it's less emotional um so that, yeah that, yeah so i think racing's phenomenal and we're all actually quite nice